welcome to our Wednesday night devotional. Glad to have you again tonight. Let's open in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time tonight. Thank you for this church, for this sanctuary. We welcome the people from Cedar Grove and the people from Pittsburgh and whoever else may listen. Glad to have them as part of this devotional tonight. We're here to worship and praise you and learn more about your word so we can be more effective in our walk. Thank you, Jesus, for mercy and grace, and thank you for your blessings to us. Thank you for meeting with us through and by your Holy Spirit. We ask these things in your name. Amen. I want to go back a little bit to an Old Testament prophet named Jonah and look at the first chapter. There's a lot, uh, well, first of all, the book of Jonah is full of the supernatural. There is a lot of supernatural happenings in the book of Jonah. Jonah was a prophet from Israel. Uh, his name Jonah means dove, and the theme of these four chapters is God's mercy, uh, that he extends to each and every one of us. It was written about the 8th century B.C., so that was several hundred years ago. And it's basically, I believe, it's a glimpse into the heart of God and how God loves and it's his will that everyone should hear the gospel and be saved and become a Christian so it gives us a chance to see the heart of God and how he extended mercy to a man named Jonah that he called for a specific duty to do. Uh, there are 16 or 17 verses, so we're going to look at those pretty close here for just a few minutes. Uh, verse number 1, Jonah 1.1. 1, 1, now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying. In the Old Testament, whenever it starts out with the word of the Lord, that just meant at that particular time that Jonah was a true prophet. And this true prophet, this for real prophet, was called by God, and he was issued a certain task, as we see in verse 2. Arise, this is God talking to Jonah, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. This, these four chapters in the Old Testament in the book of Jonah, uh, we sort of recognize that and we've heard all of our life about how Jonah got swallowed by a big fish. But the... The, uh, I believe the really true miracle is not him being swallowed by the big fish, but after three days and three nights in the belly of the fish, that he come out alive. So God give him specific instructions. Arise, go to Nineveh. One said the word of the Lord came to him, and he said, Arise, go to Nineveh that great city and cried against it or preached to them for their wickedness has come before me. Nineveh was a place at that particular time noted for a lot of evil, wicked things going on there. And so whenever uh, Jonah got the call to go to Nineveh, uh, 3 in verse 3, but Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Tarshish was uh, an exotic place. King Solomon had a lot to do what was going on there, and he had plenty of gold and plenty of silver and peacocks and monkeys and all. It was an exotic happening place, the city of Tarshish at this time. And Nineveh would be the least probably place that any uh, preacher of the gospel or prophet at that particular time wouldn't he wouldn't want to go to Nineveh so what he done was and it tells us in verse 
3, he went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. There's two different places in here, these first several verses, where it talks about Jonah ran from the presence of the Lord. And I think that that is what got him into trouble, and I think that that's what will get uh, humankind and mankind into trouble today. <clears throat> whenever we run from the presence of the Lord. <coughs> anyway, verse 3, Jonah paid the fare. Uh, he got, went down and got in the boat. And then verse 4 says, But the Lord sent out a great wind on the sea, and there was a mighty tempest on the sea, so that the ship was about to be broken up. And now comes in verse 5, the second actors, if you will, in this story. Verse 5 says, Then the mariners were afraid. So the ones who were taking care of the boat and getting it to where it was supposed to be going, 5 says, They were afraid, and every man cried out to his own God, and threw the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten the load. But Jonah, who was running from the presence of God, he was down in the bottom part of the boat asleep. It says, The mariners were afraid, and they cried out to their gods, and threw the cargo that was in the ship overboard to lighten the load. But Jonah had gone down into the lowest parts of the ship. He had laid down and was fast asleep. So the captain of the, the boat Verse 6 says, came down to him in the bottom of the ship and said, What do you mean, sleeper? Arise, call on your God. Perhaps your God will consider us so that we may not perish. So the mariners, evidently they were calling on their gods and asking to be spared. And so the captain comes down and says, Who are you? Tell me, tell me about you and call on your God. If not, we're, we're going to be in trouble. Verse 7, And they said to one another, Come, let us cast lots, that we may know for those or for whose cause this trouble has come upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. The casting of the lots uh, at that particular time, that was a normal way of doing things. And so that's not wasn't really much out of the ordinary. That's just the way that they done it at that time. But they cast lots and trying to find out which one got them in the mess. And whenever they cast lots, it fell to Jonah. So they knew immediately that he was the cause of their ship being in trouble and them to have to throw things overboard. Verse 8 then they said to him, Please tell us, for whose cause is this trouble upon us? What is your occupation, and where do you come from? What is your country, and of what people are you? Well, no, Jonah answered. So he said to them, I am a Hebrew. I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Then the men were exceedingly afraid and said to him, Why have you done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord. There that those lines are again. So I think three different times. And, and these mariners said, Why did you flee from the presence of the Lord? Verse 11, Then they said to him, What shall we do to you that the sea may be calm for us? For the sea was growing more tempestuous. So de definitely was in a situation... And now they knew the cause of that situation was Jonah, and then he was running from the presence of the Lord. Twelve said, And he said to them, Pick me up and throw me into the sea. Then the sea will become calm for you, for I know that this great tempest is because of me. So Jonah running from the Lord and disobeying and going in the opposite direction got not only himself in a jam, but all the people on the boat. 
Nevertheless, the men rode hard to return to land, but they could not, for the sea continued to grow more tempestuous against them. And then this is one of the interesting parts about this story. Starting in verse 14. Therefore they cried out to the Lord, This is the mariners on the ship. This is not uh, people who were worshiping Jehovah, the Son of God. But they started calling on Jonah's God, crying out to Jonah's God. They said in verse 14, Therefore they cried out to the Lord and said, We pray, O Lord, please do not let us perish for this man's life, and do not charge us with innocent blood, for you, O Lord, have done as it pleased you. So they picked up Jonah. This sounds like a good set of friends to have. Verse 15, So they picked up Jonah and threw him into the sea, and the sea stopped its raging. The sea stops its raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice to the Lord and took vows. So this happening that Jonah got him into caused the mariners on the boat to want to know more about who God was. If he can stop the sea and spare their lives. 17 says, Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. So what is, uh, there's several different things here going on. First of all, like I said, there's a theme in these four chapters of Jonah, and that theme is God's mercy. God's mercy. He was picked by God to go to a specific place, and he went the opposite direction, and he avoided the presence of God, and that's what got him in a jam and his fellow people on the boat in a jam. But because of that happening, the men on the boat evidently started believing in Jonah's God. So Jonah, he got himself in a mess, but in the end, I think over the next few weeks or so, I'll, I'll talk more about Jonah, and mainly because the theme of it is God's mercy, and it gives us a glimpse into the heart of God. We, in 2021, as a, a state and a nation and a world, we need to cry out for mercy for the God of the universe, the sovereign ruler. We need to cry out for mercy, uh, repent, turn from our, equal, or from our evil ways, and call on God for help. Uh, they did then, and I think we do now. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this time. Thank you for your blessings to us. Thank you for this story in the Old Testament that helps us to understand more about your heart and about how you extend mercy, even though we might go in the opposite direction and try to get out of your presence. We know that your word says that there's no place we can go that your presence is not there. So we're only kidding ourselves if we try to, to talk ourselves into thinking, well, God is not watching and we're, we're getting out of his presence. Help us, Father, this, this week, the rest of this week, to, to stay safe and to read your word and to communicate and talk with you. We ask this, these things, Father, in your name and for your sake. Amen. Thank you.